Hey guys, Richard Holder here. We are live and I've got some cool stuff to talk about. First of all, we're going to talk about a question that I got from a viewer, which is awesome because it's about one of my favorite subjects, which is compound boost. Because if one form of boost is good, two forms of boost, even better. And this is very timely because it segues into other things that we're going to talk about. I'm going to do an update on the K24, on the Buick, the Cadillac, the 292 Chevy. Um, and then I'm going to introduce the next Big Bang project because we've already started on the K24. And a few videos back, I asked you guys for help on that. We got rid of some of the parts that I have by sword. So it all worked out good for everybody. And we're going to do that again. So all of that is going to happen in this video. But what I want to do is I'm going to start off by giving you guys this guy's question. And he sent me this long, detailed. <laughs> when you send a question, here's a little segue or, or a little, uh, we're going to go off on a tangent here a little bit. But when you send a question to me, I want to answer all the questions. I always do. I always, the, my favorite thing about doing all of this, about whole, this whole YouTube thing is the interaction that I get. My favorite part about doing all of these videos is going to the comments and listening to what you guys have to say and hopefully answering some questions and then getting some questions answered by you guys. That's my favorite part. So I try to answer all the questions that I can. But when somebody says a question that's five paragraphs long, the odds of me being able to answer it are, are, are not that great. And that's only because the amount of time that I have. I mean, when I only had one or two guys that I was talking to and I could answer the questions, I, you know, I could go into depth and we could talk for a long time. But the problem is, if there's hundreds and hundreds of guys asking questions, it's a lot easier for me to answer simple questions with yes or no, or pick this camshaft or pick this turbo or whatever. But this was fairly involved. But the nice thing about it, and so what I'm saying to you is if you're going to ask questions, I want to help everybody that I can, and, and you guys help me a lot. But if I can help, I can. But if I don't have the time, I can't. But this is one instance where this long five paragraph long question actually is going to work out very well because it, it works out for something else that I wanted to talk about. And this is perfect. His question is, and, and I'm going to paraphrase it because I, I need to shorten it for you guys. Otherwise, we would run out of time. But basically, he has a two liter Ecotec four cylinder. Now, he has a M62 supercharger on it. And yes, I'm definitely going to do V6 Honda stuff. I'm going to do some stuff on that later on. I want to do the 3.2 or the 3.5. I just need to get an adapter plate to attach that to the dyno, and then we can run that stuff, which will be really cool. Um, but anyway, he's got an Ecotec M62 blower with a turbo on it, and he's using the blower, obviously, to spool the turbo up. So um, he and his tuner are kind of <laughs> at odds and they have differing opinions, which is important and, and always happens obviously on the internet and, and with people, but he is, he has a 2.7 inch blower pulley on there. He's using it to speed the blower up to, to make more power, to spool the turbo up. His tuner wants him to put a bigger, a much bigger, even bigger than stock pulley on there to slow the blower down and to probably use the turbo for more of this application and less of the blower. So his question is, with this combination, and he went into great detail <laughs> about all the things that were going on the motor, which is awesome. Um, his question is, does the parasitic loss increase with RPM? And he's talking about the supercharger, obviously. Um, does the parasitic loss increase with the RPM or does it reach a steady state and doesn't rob any more power? So that's a good question. Um, it, it has a fairly easy answer. And I want you guys to go ahead and answer in the comments if you guys know what the answer is. And we're going to cover all of this in great detail because the compound stuff, it has some unique things that are kind of cool about it. His next question is, um, is four to six pounds of boost from the blower enough boost to spool the turbo up quickly? Because that's what he's trying to do. And we're going to talk about the compound stuff. But when you have a um, when you're trying to put boost to the blower to make it think it's a bigger motor to spool up a big turbo, how much do you need? Um, and then his final question is, uh, with a large pulley on the blower, is it more, um, with a pulley at large on the blower, is it more of a detriment than a benefit to you? So he, he's wondering about blower speed, um, on the blower versus the turbo. So this is kind of cool stuff, but I want you guys to answer those and let me know what you think about the compound stuff and what you, what you think we, I should tell this guy, but obviously I, <laughs> I'm going to go a particular direction, but it's important to note that uh, the reason this is so cool, I mean, obviously it's a compound deal, so it's kind of cool, but also it segues me into what my next big bang motor is going to be. Right now we have the K24, we've run a bunch of tests on the K24 Honda, and I'm going to do a big bang on that. All we have to do is we're going to take the head off, we're going to port the head, 
We already have cams in it for the Skunk 2 cams. We already have their intake. We've already run a bunch of the turbos. And I have that video coming up where I ran four different turbos on this combination, which was kind of cool. Uh, we are going to put head studs in it. We are going to, obviously, I'm going to gap the rings. I haven't done that yet. And I think we're also going to do the oil pump upgrade because they have one there. But the balance shaft stuff and the K24 oil pump has been working really well. We run it all the way to 8,700. And I think that we can run it even higher than that. And so for guys who are listening about the K24 stuff, the boost there or the oil pressure curve with the factory balance shaft oil pump on the k24 went up to a peak of about 85 pounds on our testing and then only fell off slightly to about 82 or 83 pounds so it's, it's way more than enough um, oil pressure even at that high rpm with that stock pump so that worked out good a uh, quick upgrade on the Buick. I have a bunch of heads and stuff, and I'm going to go down and do that. I'm going to finish up the Buick stuff. The Cadillac only needs about one or two more dyno days. We're going to run the turbo. We're going to run nitrous on it. I'm going to run a bunch of um, different carburetor sizes. We're going to do that, which will be really good. And then obviously the 292 is going back together, and we'll be able to run that, and I'll be able to run a bunch of testing on that and put a turbo on that. And that's the motor that's going to go in the Nova. When I take the Nova down, we're going to get that thing running. So all of that is cool, but the thing that I wanted to talk about and why this is important, this little Ecotech question, is because the next big bang motor after the K24 is going to be the 3800 Series 2 V6. And if I listen closely, I can hear the applause in the background <laughs> because I know that that's very popular. Uh, shout out to my guys down in Australia because I know that that's a, that's a really popular motor down there. So I'm going to go get that from the wrecking yard. In fact, I'm going to go get more than one. I'm actually going to get two of them because one of them we're going to take apart and do the ring gap and do all that stuff. The other one, I'm going to get up on the dyno and run and do a bunch of testing with the blower and stuff. And one of those tests is going to be a compound turbo system. So the, I like the way that the exhaust is on the factory 3800 series. It just lends itself to a just sticking a turbo on there because it, it already has a Y pipe and everything. So all of that should work out really well. So I'm going to run that test. So I'm going to get two of those motors and we're definitely going to do a big bang. Um, if you guys know, let me know in the comments. Um, I can't, <laughs> there's a ton of them. It's hard for me to read them all and, and answer all the questions. But if you guys know, let me know who has the aluminum heads for these. And I'm going to try to raise some money so you guys can help me out and help pay for some of this stuff so I can get these two motors and do all the dyno testing and get all the parts and, you know, just <laughs> put my heart and soul into a Big Bang 3800. But what I want to do, and because I'm sure that they're in limited supply, there's probably only one guy out there making them. I need aluminum heads, some good high flowing aluminum heads for this 3800. Because if we're going to make big power with this thing, we need to get the NA motor to make big power. So what we want to do is have the stock short block. Obviously, there are cams available for it. That's not a problem. Um, I can get cams for it. We want to put some good high flowing aluminum heads, or at the very least, ported iron heads on there. And I've got a couple of different intakes we can run. And then we want to Put, the, put a big turbo on it and I've got plenty of turbos that we can run that will make the kind of power that we need to make and we'll run this thing up and kind of see what happens. So you guys let me know about the, if you guys know about the 3800s, you know, yes, the 3800, very popular in the Fiero. And, and honestly, that's that's one of the motors that they definitely should have put in the Fiero. The other one is the old quad four. I wish if they would have, if GM would have had a Fiero that had an old quad four, like a 200 horsepower old quad four motor in it, they would have sold like a million of those things. Uh, T6 on a 5.3, yes, all, all of that works fine, but you only need a T4 on a 5.3 because you can make a 1,000 horsepower with that. Big Bang on a 1JZ, uh, I don't know. The the the, the 1JZ and the 2JZ stuff, there's lots and lots of information out there, and everybody knows that they can make a lot of power. Um, I'm more interested in putting the RB25 that I have up and running a bunch of stuff on that. Uh, oh, ZZ Performance has aluminum heads. Okay, I thought that those guys, and I, and I got pulleys and stuff from those guys already, so maybe that's a good way to go. But anyway, that's what I'm doing. And to raise money, I'm, I mean, I'm going to try to do this in every video now. Um, and as an update, uh, the guy that was going to buy the LT4 heads, the factory LT4 heads that I use, and I have the airflow data on the L99, the LT1, and the LT4 heads. I'm going to doing a video on that. That's that's coming up. Um, and also the the last turbo testing that I did on the K24, that's coming up also. But those LT4 heads are once again for sale. So if you're interested in those, um, let me know, send me a message to killerb16 at aol.com. I'll put that in the description. I'll put the email address again. I put it up a number of times, but 
if you guys are interested in the LT4 heads, those, because I'm not going to really put those on anything uh, after we get done with the airflow testing and stuff. So if you guys are interested in those, send me uh, an email and let me know. Um, and I can't wait to put all the airflow data up there. So it's pretty interesting. The L99 heads, the little 4.3 liter heads actually flow pretty well. And I'm going to, I want to talk to the guys at probably Pro Charger. If you guys are listening, um, I'd like to put a supercharger on this little LT1 or this baby LT1, the, L, the L99, the little 4.3 liter and run some boost on it. And then I have turbo stuff that I can put on it also, which is cool. So did you guys, uh, oh, I need to get to my, <laughs> I need to get to my fundraising for the 3,800 Big Bang. So the first thing I have for sale is this. And the last time I did the, when I did the K24 stuff, um, I did it the wrong way. I, I announced that I had a few things and if the guys would, guys would, uh, you know, donate a certain amount of money that they would get a part. Well, that just turned into chaos. So if you're one of the guys out there that donated money or to buy a camshaft or whatever that I was going to give away. Cause I only, I announced that I only had three of them and then I get about 10 or 15 guys that did it. And so I had to scramble to try to find stuff to take care of them. So if you're one of those guys, make sure to send me an email. I thought I sent emails out to everybody that did that. And I want to make sure that I get you guys your parts and, if, and thank you again for all your help. But uh, right now to try to help raise money for the 3,800 big bang thing. The first thing I'm going to do is I have a big block Chevy camshaft and it's like a real kind of man sized camshaft for a big block Chevy. It is a solid roller camshaft and it is a 775 740 lift with the standard rocker ratio. It is a 284 286 at 50 and a 114 degree lobe separation angle. So remember, big block Chevy cam, it's, a, it's for a Mark IV, although you could use it in a Gen 5 and a Gen 6. You just have to use the right um, timing gear and stuff. So that's a big cam. We've used lots of cams like this in big block stuff, um, especially on bigger motors. But you, if you put that in a 496, it's going gonna, it's gonna to rev pretty good. It's going to make a lot of power. It's even better on a, a 502 or a 540 or something. So that's like a real camshaft. That's, you know, you could do... Um, I think you could certainly do 800 NA with that, with a camshaft like that. So it works really well. The next thing is, and this is more universal for lots of different guys. So I have this crane HI6, HI6R fireball <laughs> ignition amplifier and works really good. That was originally going to go on my Chevy Sprint motor. Um, but unfortunately, since that car got stolen and, and crushed, that's a whole long story about, I, I can't believe that that happened to that poor little car. I was getting, getting it ready for Bonneville was having a um, cage put in it and stuff. And somebody stole it from the shop that, that they were working on it. But that is a part number 6,000-6400. If you want to look it up and get some more information on it, if you are interested in that, again, the address is killerb16 at AOL. You guys can, I'll, I'll put that in the description so you can send me some information. Wait, here I can, I think I have it on here somewhere. Put this, put this up. Well, we'll put it in the description, but it, it, it looks like this. <laughs> this is, they're not all caps though. K-I-L-L-E-R-B-E-1-6 at AOL.com, killerb16. All lowercase, <laughs> so you can read my writing. Um, so those are the two things, and then the LT four heads. If you guys are interested in that, let me know. And I'm just because uh, I'm trying to do two things. I want to get you guys good deals on some stuff. I have stuff that's just laying around. I mean, it may have been laying around for years and years. I'm trying to clean out some of my storage stuff and help you guys out. It helps me out. It helps us do like future stuff, which is cool. Um, you know, doing the big bang stuff. I, I'm really excited. I get really excited about each one. I wanted the K24, you know, when I put the motors up on the dyno, we start doing testing with it. And we run, run after run after run. That K24 already has over a hundred pulls on, on the dyno. And the thing is like, there's no blow by the thing runs perfect. The oil pressure is great. I just fall in love with these motors and then I don't want to hurt them, <laughs> but we're going to turn the boost up and, uh, and, and make some power. So, now we can get to our we can get to our question here. What did you what do you guys think? What did you guys think about the compound boost deal? Um, I want to talk to I want to answer his question and I, I'm going to do it in the following way. First thing I want to talk about is he he's having a not an argument but <laughs> a difference of opinion between himself and his tuner about what works best. And I want to I want to address that a little bit because it it speaks to what happens out on the internet. And what happens on the internet is we link our opinion to our ego. 
And when we attach our ego to the opinion, since we are infallible <laughs> by definition, it can't be wrong. So our opinion has to be right. So when we interject our opinion, when somebody makes a comment or a post or whatever, we, we have our ego attached to that. Um, we don't want to say that that's wrong. And the problem is that stops actual information from, from us figuring out what actually is right. Because we're more interested in convincing people that we are right than we are about finding out what is actually right. And that's that's an unfortunate part of the internet and that's human nature and, and that happens. So what I would want to do is for these two guys, um, try to separate your ego from the information. And the best way, obviously, to find out anything is to test it. So if you were to, what I would recommend on this thing is obviously we'll, we'll cut to the chase really quickly here and then we'll discuss this in more length. But the obvious thing is to try a different pulley on here and see what direction it's going. So I wouldn't recommend going to the really big pulley and slowing the thing down altogether. What I would recommend is putting a stock pulley back down there, run it back and test it and see what it does. Then you have two data points. You go, okay, with a small pulley, it did this. With the bigger pulley, it did this. With less blower boost, it did this. And then we have a trajectory going in some direction that tells us, hey, yeah, if we went to a bigger pulley even, it would do that. So I just set aside your ego for a minute and then focus on finding the answer. I mean, the same thing happens with anything. If we talk about politics or we talk about religion or we talk about our favorite color, if your favorite color is red and mine is blue and we argue back and forth about what is the best color, that's just foolish. It's a fool's errand. It doesn't, I'm never gonna convince you that my favorite color is the best one and you're never gonna convince me that your favorite color is the best one. The reality is what we need to do is step back and go, <laughs> it doesn't matter. I can have my favorite color and you can have your favorite color. And actually, in this case, both of them are right. And, and that's in the way that we get to that point, the way that we evolve and get to that ability is that we disconnect our ego from that decision. I mean, whatever we choose <laughs> is not ego based. It should be information based. And in this case, it's an opinion. And it's even more important that we disconnect the ego because our thing can be right and your thing can be right. And if we all pick the same color, the whole world would be one color. And how boring would that be? That would be terrible. So whether it's politics or religion or whatever, disconnect your, your ego with that and then have your opinion, which is awesome. But don't go out of your way to try to make sure that everybody else has to share that opinion because it's 100 percent right, because I'll let you in on a little secret <laughs> and it doesn't even take testing to tell you this. It's not absolute right. It could be right for you. And that's fantastic. And I will stand next to you back to back and fight for your right to have your opinion about whatever it is, even if I don't agree with it. And that's what we need, all need to get to. We all need to realize that what, what makes America great is not the fact that we have one particular opinion. It's the fact that we get to have that. We get to have a choice. We get to choose between this and this and this and this and this and this. It doesn't matter what you choose. As a matter of fact, I've stood next to people and fought with them, even though I didn't believe in the thing that they chose, because that's not what America is. America is about our ability to choose, and that's what makes it important. So whether it's red or blue or Ford or Chevy or import or domestic, whatever it is, support uh, other people's choices because you know this is America. So we need to get to our compound boost discussion. So now here's um, in, I'll start with the hierarchy of, of power output. So what on in the hierarchy scale of power, you have an NA motor, okay? Then you have a supercharged motor. It could be any kind of supercharger, centrifugal, roots blower, twin screw, and you guys can get into your little hierarchies of which one of those is best. But then you have supercharged. At the top, you have turbo. In between, because a turbo, and the reason for a turbo being on the top is because a turbo makes more power than a blower at any given boost level. And I realize that that's a general statement. And obviously we're talking about if the turbo is sized properly for what we're doing. But the reason for that is a turbo does not have um, parasitic loss associated with driving a supercharger. When you spin a supercharger and it provides airflow to the blower, whatever it comes from, the centrifugal, roots, blower, twin screw, it takes power to drive that blower. So if you provide eight pounds from a blower and eight pounds from a turbo, they could make the same power, except that you have to subtract the parasitic loss that it took to drive the blower to get it there. 
So that's why they make less power at any given boost level normally. And I've run that test a bunch. I have that video up where we ran all the different forms of force induction on a modular motor. I've also done it on a small block forward. I've also, and, that, and the video is up on the Honda as well. So I've done that test a lot and I know what it does. And every SAE paper ever written <laughs> correlates that. The math correlates that. All my testing correlates that. So that's really what happens. But they're all good. So we've got NA, blower, turbo. In between blower and turbo is compound. And the reason for that is it has the added benefit of the turbo, which we know is top, um, and it has the blower. So it's in between those two. So you might be asking yourself, why would you ever put a blower if the turbo is the best thing? Why would you put a blower if you're going for absolute power? Well, there are a lot of reasons for a blower that's different than a turbo. You get immediate boost and it's really cool. But the reason most guys run compounds and the reason that this guy wanted to run a compound on an Ecotech 2 liter is because normally they would be putting a turbo on there that's big. So if you have a 2 liter motor and let's say you were trying to make a thousand horsepower, well, the turbo that's required to make a thousand horsepower is not gonna be very sporty <laughs> on the spool. <laughs> so it wants to run at a really high RPM. It wants to run at a really high boost level. And to get it there, the two liter motor has to really kind of struggle. The way that you improve boost response of with any turbo is to make more power from your NA motor. So you can do that in a number of ways. You can make it bigger, you can put camshafts in it, you can make compression, you can do lots of things. But one of the things that you can do, and this is what they did on the Ecotech motor, and what we're going to do on the third, and this, this is the connection, I forgot to mention that. This is what we're going to do on the 3800 series deal is, that, is we are going to do a compound deal to show it just because it's cool and it's a compound. But the reason that people do that is because um, you're trying to improve the power output of that combination to help spool a turbo. So a blower does a really good job of that. So if we take a 200 horsepower motor and make it a 300 horsepower motor, all of a sudden there's more exhaust energy from the 300 horsepower motor. It provides more exhaust energy to the turbo. It spools the turbo up. The turbo gets happier, quicker, and you have the cycle going on, you know, more boost, more exhaust, more boost, more exhaust. And it does all the wonderful things that a turbo does. So that's why you would put a blower on there so that you would improve the response of a big turbo. But here's the question in this particular example. On an Ecotech 2 liter, if you have an M62 supercharger on there, how much blower do you actually need? So that's why I want them to test the different pulley sizes. So let's say you have a, let's say you have an M62 and he's got a modified motor. So let's say that the thing makes, um, let's say it makes 300 horsepower. Well, if we knew that the 100, let's say that the NA motor made 150 horsepower. Well, if we knew that the NA 150 horsepower wasn't enough to properly spool the turbo, and we know that the 300 or 350 horsepower motor definitely is, where is that middle ground? So can we still spool that turbo at 300, at 250? Like if we lower the boost basically, and, then, and you have to think about this by separating the turbo and the motor. The supercharged motor is its own entity. So it, it's basically, it could be for all intents and purposes, be a V6 or a big block or whatever it is, but, but how much power does it take to spool that turbo? So will it do it at 300? Will it do it at 250? Whatever the lowest boost amount that's still going to spool a turbo is, you could run it at that. So, but now the question is, would that be better? Is it better to run more blower speed and less from the turbo or the other way around So go ahead and answer in the comments and let me know. But here's what I'll tell you. I've run compound stuff a few times and, and shout out to Jimmy, uh, Jimmy Hiddle from HP performance. who did the most of the testing out there um, with an O3 Cobra that he ran turbos on. So here's, here's kind of some cool information on that test. When we ran the O3 Cobra motor, um, he had twin turbos on it and he had the blower. So he ran it, he ran it NA, he ran it with just the blower, he ran it with just the turbos and then we ran it compound. And, and having just the turbos is, is the most powerful combination, assuming you can spool the turbos. Running it with the blower, so they ran it with the blower at, uh, the blower was by itself, when it was run just with the blower, was running uh, 11 pounds. Then they put the turbos on with the wastegate set for seven pounds. It's important to note that a lot of guys are going to go, well, how would you do that? Because it's already making more boost than that. Well, you're taking your boost reference between the turbos and the blower. So the turbos are supplying seven pounds to the blower. So you get seven pounds from the turbo, 11 pounds from the blower. 
So you should have 18 pounds, right? <laughs> well, you don't. <laughs> With the magic of compounding, you we got 21 or 22 pounds in the motor, in the manifold. And the reason for that is that when you force feed a supercharger, you dramatically increase the efficiency of the blower. So instead of having to suck all that air in, it's like, hey, all of a sudden there's a party coming in and we're, we are a lot more efficient. We are getting a lot more air in for every revolution that I'm doing. And we are going to then supply a lot more power. So that's what happens. So you get a very high boost level with a compound system. The ideal situation, again, is to get the blower out of the way <laughs> and just let the turbos do it. But if you have big enough turbos on there and you want to spool them, the, the blower is a good way. But in this particular instance, um, and, to, and to, I need to backtrack a little bit to answer his first question about parasitic loss. And I'm sure that you guys have answered that already. Yes, if you spin a supercharger, any supercharger, faster and a higher speed and a higher boost level, um, we've done testing on, on blower dynos with a lot of these, including the TVS and stuff. And when you spin them very fast at a high blower speed and a high boost pressure, it takes a lot of power to drive these. I mean, we're talking on something like on a TVS, the new TVS run on the engine blower dyno or run on the blower dyno. It can take more than 300 horsepower to drive that supercharger at 20,000 RPM and 20 pounds of boost. So the guys that are out there running those. And the problem is that the, the parasitic loss associated with driving the blower goes up at a fairly linear ish rate. But when it gets to the unhappy point, that curve just goes up and so does the charge temperature. So if you run it in that unhappy zone, which is where most racers try to do it because you just want to keep spinning it because it adds more air, um, bad things happen. So keep the blower in its kind of sweet spot because that blower was obviously that that TBS and, and every blower, the M62, they're all designed to run in a given RPM range and the OEMs chose them to, to make the power that they want in, in, the, in the speed that they want. So keep them in their happy range and they work very well. So uh, can the blower be spun slower? Um, I think yes. I think you test it, and that's how we find out, and that's how we get the data. We, as I said, disconnect our ego from that, run the test, look at the data. The data tells us the yes or no thing, and it's really easy. We can you know, disconnect ourselves from that and go, here, here, look, here's what the data says. Here's what he will probably find if he does that, that the slower that he slow that he if you slow the blower down and let the turbo do more of the work, if the turbo is sized to do that, it will have no problem doing that. Um, have the blower there to get the spool that you want, get it out of the way basically. But here's the here's the technical question, and here's why I'd want to see this thing. Uh, I'm going to try to get to all your guys' comments in just a minute, <laughs> as, as soon as I'm done monologuing. <laughs> um, here's what I would like to see from that data, as we slow the blower down, because the amount of air that the blower can process is a function of its speed. So as we're asking the turbo to force more air into and do more of the work and we slow the blower down, does the blower become a restriction? So that's a good question for you guys. Let me know what you guys think. If we slow the blower down, are we creating a restriction between the turbo and the blower? Do we have a buildup of boost between the turbo and the blower, which is regulating the boost to the turbo? So ultimately, are we going to have a, a problem there? Should we just regulate the boost in the manifold at a much, much higher setting? Just clamp that wastegate down so it keeps doing what it's supposed to. There's lots of lots of cool stuff to talk about on this compound system. But again, the reason that they do it make the NA-ish supercharged combination more powerful, spool the turbo up, good things happen. And plus, when you pop the hood and drive around, show people a turbo Ecotech is really cool and a supercharged Ecotech is really cool, but a compound Ecotech is, is really even cooler. So I hope that answers your question. Um, I think we got to cover everything. I got to cover the LT foreheads, ignition, the cam, all of that stuff. So maybe I'll take a couple of questions before we sign off. And I, I, I want to thank all you guys for being here and for helping out. <laughs> twin, twin charge math, one plus one equals five. That's kind of the way that it works, which is really cool, which makes uh, compound stuff really good. Let's see. Compound turbo tested. I did. There is a compound turbo test uh, video up. Um, we didn't run a lot of boosts. I think we were only ran in the mid twenties or something, but it was, it was just kind of more of a G whiz thing for me. Cause I wanted to try it. It was cool on the LS. It worked out really good. Wouldn't you get similar boost multiplication from sequential turbos? 
are you talking about, well, sequential turbos are going to be a small turbo and a big turbo. And normally what they do in sequential stuff is they shut the smaller one off with a valve. At least that's what they do from the factory stuff. Um, they're basically using sequential turbos um, as kind of this thing where we have a smaller turbo to, to take the place of the blower in that case and get the thing spooled up as quickly as we can and then let the big turbo take over, which is a, a cool thing too. The problem is the plumbing is a little bit complicated um, with the switch valves and stuff because you, you got to stop the exhaust. You got to generate, you got to have to have all the exhaust then switching over to go to the big turbo and you have to have the small turbo you have to block that off. Otherwise you backfeed the small turbo because the big turbo is going to overcome the small turbo. It's kind of cool. If the supercharger pumps more volume and a, let's see. Can you turbo a 14 to one alcohol motor? Probably on alcohol you can. Secret is a small blower for instantaneous boost and a bypass. Well, that's what the, on the compound stuff, the guys at the Lancia Delta Integrale, the old group B stuff, that's what they did. They used the blower to spool this thing up and keep the thing up on the turbo. Uh, but they had a really, really complex uh, valve system on their inlets and everything so that they could eventually bypass the supercharger, which is a good idea. Twin charge the LS. Yeah, I, I'm going to do that. Um, I, I have a, an M112 from an 03 Cobra that I, I'm going, going to put on my adapter plate that I was trying to run the M90 on there on the 4.8, and then we're going to run the turbo on that. But shh, don't tell anybody about that. That's top secret. Um, sequential is kind of parallel, except that they're both not usually working at the same time like a twin turbo setup is. Uh, no electronic boost controller on the K24. Um, we didn't really need it for what we were doing this time. Um, I want to do it next time because I'd like to actually control boost with RPM. Um, but they didn't have that available over there. But I think that the AEM will do that. So we would just need to get the right kind of um, solenoid to activate it. Have you tried direct injection methanol? I have not. Compressed air supercharging. Uh, I talked to the guys that did that and they want to do something with me. In fact, they want to do it on the Big Bang motor and the, the Big Bang six liter and make more power than we did with the turbos because they're pretty sure it will do it. And after seeing what it did on some of their stuff, I think it definitely has the potential to do that. Twin charger 3800 with a stock supercharger. That's what we're going to do. Is a bare 69 302 block worth anything? Yeah, they're all worth. Um, if you have a, if it's a DZ 302 block, then yeah, it's definitely worth money. If it's got the right original casting numbers for the right guy. M112 run out of breath. Yeah, it will. An M112 won't be, you know, it'll run out of breath on an LS, but this is only a 4.8 and has a mild cam in it. And we've run on an 03 Cobra, we've run almost 600 horsepower with that M112. So we know that it will make. You know, it certainly would do 500 or 550 if we turned it up. Um, but we're not trying to max out the M112. We just want the blower to be there to help spool a turbo. Because what I have is on, and I'll I'll go into that a little bit. But what I have is a giant size turbo from Byron at BS Racing, and it's going to be super laggy on the 4.8, especially because it had we had a high ram on it, which is dumb, and we had uh, with a 4.8 with an intake manifold that's all wrong for it, um, and a big turbo on it. It's going to be not a good thing, but when we add the blower to it, it'll help boost response. So it'll be kind of a cool test to see. Yeah, VNT turbos, those were cool back in the day. Uh, first thing to do to a 4.8. Uh, the 4.8, it, cam and springs is usually the best thing or, or, or boost, just leave it stock and run boost on it. It's funny how far the gas guys are behind the diesel guys. Yep. Diesel guys interjecting their superiority. That's funny. Electric turbochargers boost occurs off idle. That would be cool. Uh, K24 with uh, 1320 supercharger. The K24 is an impressive piece. It's it's really impressive. A 1.4T Ecotec would be cool from the, um, what the heck did they put those in? The, um, the cruise maybe? Port the intake on the 
the on a stock one, a stock uh, truck intake on a four eight. I don't think we need to do that on a four eight. Hundred and sixty six millimeter turbo. <laughs> yeah, you'd have a hard time just pulling that up. Yeah, you're gonna need um, if you're if you're. I don't know why you would try to run one hundred and sixty six millimeter on a five three because I don't know how much power you're trying to make. But since you can make a thousand horsepower with something that's half that size um, or even more than that, I don't know why you would do that. But if you wanted to spool that up, um, a two hundred shot of nitrous would definitely do it. No, no Subaru stuff. I've only done chassis dyno stuff on Subarus, and they they work good. An old quad four. No, Todd, I would really like to test an old quad quad four. Those are really cool. Some of my favorite motors but I haven't run one. And our problem with running them, at least at West Tech, and the reason that why we run the K motor over at the guys with the skunk is that we didn't have an adapter plate to run it on the dyno, but I really kind of want to get one now. And I'd, I'd like to get a dual adapter plate if I could, or make one so that I can run the K24 and the um, the 3.2 and 3.5 liter V6 motors um, that are the Hondas, the J motors. Yes, I do want to do a boosted Magnum. I'm going to get a, a 360 Magnum, probably not a 318, but a 360 Magnum, and we'll run boost. I want to do the beer keg deal and beer keg modifications and all that stuff. I want to see how much torque that thing makes. The VQ motors are cool. Again, that it, all, all of that is just adapter plate limited for us to be able to put it on the dyno. Uh, I don't have a favorite engine. My favorite engine is the next engine that I test. <laughs> I'm really excited about the 3800 Big Bang deal because the thing that's cool is, and the reason that I like doing some of these different things is that it's it is different. I, I you know I like LS motors and I, I like turbo LS motors and small blocks and big blocks, but when when you run them all the time for 20 years, you want to do something new, and there's always something new to find out about different motors, and that's kind of cool. A Grand National would be good. Um, the 3800 series is kind of more prevalent. And the Grand National is kind of limited. VVT L94 with a big cam. Are, how big of a cam can you put on a VVT motor unless you got rid of the VVT? Then it's just a turbo LS. But yeah, you could put an S475. Again, if you're trying to get 800 wheel horsepower, an S475 size turbo or 7875 Gen 2 like we got from VS Racing, any of those turbos will make that kind of power. <laughs> 351 v6 yeah i know people want me to run the gmc v6 those people use too small primary in the compound side but but we're trying to get the thing to spool up when you use a small primary turbo i've done rotaries but i've only done rotaries on the chassis dyno we haven't run them on the engine dyno um i've owned a, a, a couple of rx7s and we did on those we did small stuff i don't think i ever even put a turbo on either one of those um we did uh you know headers and and webers on them and stuff um we did some cool testing by trying a bunch of different fans on the rotary we tried those flex fans and stuff and those things are just terrible uh bigger cams for the triton v10 we, we know that um, the guys from schneider racing which i are down in san diego will do cams for the v10 which is why i want to do a v10 now so if i find one of those in the wrecking yard we'll, we'll go ahead and snag that and, and store that away in my storage until we can get something to that because i want to do that i want to try the v10 it's it's going to be you know just a bigger 4.6 liter two valve motor basically um you know just with more cylinders on it which would be cool but the nice thing is that um, it doesn't, with with having 10 cylinders, even though it's limited in head flow, there are more cylinders. So it doesn't have to have a, as much head flow to make lots of power. So it's kind of a cool deal. LT3 four-cylinder turbo. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, the Sunbird, the old Sunbird turbos, those were neat. The 24X versus the 58X, I haven't seen any difference in power, at, at least at the power levels that we've run stuff, um, going to those different things. I, I don't, as long as you can have the ignition timing right and the, and the air fuel right. Um, guys also ask about the different EFI setups, a Holly or Fast or Motec. Or, all of those do different things that are that are not part of the putting the right air fuel and timing to it. They, they do other things. They log other kinds of channels that guys that are racing want. But if you if the thing wants 29 degrees and the and the the ECU that you use will give you 29 degrees, it's going to make that kind of power. 
VW, I've done a lot of VW turbo stuff, both on the chassis dyno or most of them on the chassis dyno. I was involved in a couple of VW land speed record um, deals. And we, we <laughs> or unfortunately had to use that, um, the GSR Beetle that had the, that four cylinder that had, I think it was a sub two liter motor that had the, um, the cylinder head that had the turbo mount right to the head. So it had the flange on the head and that's not a good piece. We had, we had nothing but problems with it. Yeah. And a 1.9 TDI um, really doesn't need a blower feeding the, the turbo because the, the TDI makes so much low speed power in a diesel application that usually res turbo response is fine. And since a turbo, a, a turbo diesel is a little different, um, having a turbo just provides you with the air, but the, the, those things are throttled by fuel. So if you can get more fuel to it, usually you can get turbo response and stuff. It's kind of a different deal with a diesel application. A grand national with aluminum heads that you'll donate. <laughs> uh, I could, I could talk to Jim Bell and Kenny Detweiler and find out what the limit of those grand national blocks are and stuff. Um, they, they could give me a pretty good idea because they, they made some crazy power with those things back in the day. A 4G63, yep. The I, I think you're talking about the um, Mitsubishi motors. Those are really cool. They make a lot of power with the um, with the Mitsubishi stuff. I mean, it's you know it was kind of designed around that, so they're they're actually fairly stout. Cheap intercoolers. Uh, we run on, on our intercoolers, we run that stuff from CX racing at 1500 horsepower. And, um, those are not $2,000. <laughs> those aren't, aren't anywhere near that. LS one for 500 horsepower. That, that's just a, um, that's really just a, a good cam and ported heads. You could get to 500 horsepower. Mitsubishi 4G motor. I like those. I've done lots of chassis dyno testing on the Mitsubishi stuff, but not on the engine dyno. A tall deck big buck Chevy. Yeah, those are those are rare. Problem is there's not as many intake manifolds and stuff for them. Although, otherwise, you have to use the adapter plates for them. Yes, rotary stuff, but only on the chassis dyno. A Saab 2 liter, yeah. <laughs> I like the Saabs because they're kind of kind of kooky. There was a guy out at the Silver State one of the first years that we were there. He had a Saab Sonnet with a um, an all an iron headed small block Ford in it. Um, the you know it made decent power, but I'm sure the handling was diabolical. <laughs> Volvo T5 stuff. I, I like the Volvos. I think that they're really cool. I especially like a Volvo wagon. Um, lots of guys do LS swaps on those, but even the four cylinder stuff that's in there is really good. There were a couple of guys that ran those out the Silver State when they were first bringing those to market. They had a factory Volvo team come out and run the T5R stuff, and um, they were pretty impressive. No, I haven't. I don't have a 7.3 gas motor. Uh, maybe Ford would supply a, a crate motor or something. I don't know. I just don't have access to any of those. And besides Evan and those guys, and and those guys are doing real cool stuff with the 7.3 liter. They're, they're that's a, those are real high dollar builds on those. Torque star on my LS3, 749 flywheel horsepower. So you must have a, if you're, if you have a torque storm on there and a 749 horsepower flywheel, um, if you're, if I'm assuming that that's a single one, you must have a really good LS3 because that's getting up near the flow limit of that particular blower. But yeah, we've been in that range before. It, it, it's, a uh, it's pretty good there. Trick flow head. Yeah. The trick flow, um, 215 or 225 head on the LS1 for 500 horsepower. That's a good thing. Although you can also port the factory heads on an LS1, especially a ported 243 head works really well um, for an LS1, especially at that power level. The small turbo for a budget on a 5.3 LS is that e eBay GT45 turbo, the one that I just ran on the K24 and we've ran it on almost every other motor too. It was $163 when we bought it online. So that's pretty cheap and it's about a 750 or 800 horsepower turbo. Yes, I would, I would like to run the Silver State again. I just don't know what I would run it in right now. Uh, I need to put my Mustang back together and that would be kind of cool to go back there and 
do a Phoenix kind of resurrection silver state. <laughs> Pujo Fufus in 99 and 2000. Oh, cool. <laughs> and they didn't finish the Pujo. The Pujos are cool. They used to do really well in show more stock racing back in the day. Uh, 1970 LT1, 30, 30 cam, AFR heads. That's a good combination. A bear would be cool, but I, I don't, I'm not going to do a bear because they're, they're just not, they're not readily available here in the United States. I am going to do a 4,200 um, six cylinder Chevy though. And, and now I think we figured out how to get the tuning on that so we can make some good power with that. 1.4 cruise motors. Yep. Those would be fun. Actually, I have a one liter Chevy Sprint motor that's, that's, um, was the running motor when I pulled it out. It's the one that we set records with it. It made 120 at the tire with the stock turbo turned all the way up. Um, we only got to run it at about a hundred at the tire because the clutch started slipping, but um, that motor would be fun to run on the engine dyno. And, and uh, I also did a compound turbo setup on that with it in the car. Um, but if anybody's interested out there in a Chevy Sprint turbo motor, let me know that I'm going to sell that thing too. Cause I don't have another, one to put it in. I also have a lot of other stuff. I have forged rods for it, forged pistons. I have some custom intake manifolds. I have an air to water intercooler. I have some turbo upgrades for it. I have all kinds of stuff. So if you, you are a Chevy Sprint guy, I've got a lot of stuff and we'll make you a sweet deal on it. If, it's, if so, let me know. Send send me an email to killerb16 at AOL.com. I'll put that in the description. And if and I, I want to see this stuff being used in a Sprint because it, it, ran perfect for me. We, I have, I have the factory air to air intercooler. I have an air to water that I made for it. We did a, um, a bypass valve upgrade, all kinds of cool stuff, you know, put, <laughs> put clicks in the vein meter, you know, the, the, all the stuff that you did back in the day, the 4,200 trailblazer. That's the one I was talking about. And we're going to, we're going to definitely do something with that. Uh, cheaper to get five or 600 horsepower on heads cam or, or a turbo. Um, if you're going to choose between those two, um, I would go the turbo because your whatever power you get from the heads and cam, you're limited to that. It's only going to do that. But with a turbo, you just turn it up a little bit and, and it's 500, then it's 600, then it's 700. And you can do that with all the stock stuff. Um, the, on the LS3 question on an LQ4 with LS3 heads and stuff and, and dome pistons, find out how far the head or how far, how far the piston is out of the deck. If it's out of the deck, like a lot of the stock stuff, then I would go with a, um, 51 or 53 head gasket because otherwise the, the, um, head to piston clearances gets really minimal, but make sure you measure that. If it's, if it's, if it's at zero deck or if the piston's down in the hole, then you can go with the, um, a tighter head gasket, an 041 or something. A first gen Chrysler Hemi. 120 horsepower. <laughs> Nick's Garage, I like those guys. They, those guys do good stuff out there. An Ecotech 3 Vortex Gen 5, Big Bang. Those are those are late model and they're just really expensive and hard to get. Uh, and they're direct injection. So it's a real, it's it's real problematic to try to run those on the dyno because there's no I have to run a factory ECU and it's just it takes a lot of work. Uh, no, I didn't do adapters to mate the Cadillac supercharger. I just got rid of the Cadillac supercharger. It's just it's way too much work for what it for what it is. There are easier ways to do it. Good advice for turbo systems on for turbo sizes on LS1 for five or 600 horsepower. Yes, that eBay GT45 turbo works. There's lots of other good choices. Um, I just go back to that one because it was so cheap and it will achieve what you want for almost no money. You'd spend a lot, you're going to spend a lot more money on fuel injectors and fuel pumps and stuff like that than you will on a turbo. Yes, a Chrysler Conquest. I like those. <laughs> those are cool. And the Starions. Uh, I don't know what turbo would be best because I don't know what kind of power you're trying to get. But something like a T3 GT45 will get you to 500 horsepower, and, and that's a fairly common upgrade. Sprint stuff working a Samurai. The Samurai has a four-cylinder in it. Um, I don't know if the – I mean, I don't know how the mounting and stuff is on the, on the Sprint stuff, but it would be, be, be a cool swap, though. 
this channel needs more five inch bore spacing. That's that's race motor stuff. I that's not that's not for me. 427 Windsor versus Cleaver head shootout. That would be good. Big bang LY6 with better map sensor. I now have a five bar map sensor because so we so we can do that. A QR25 Nissan. What is that? I'm not. Is that a um? Is that the Sentra 2.5 motor? An FA20. Thumbs up on the FA. T45. Uh, I haven't done an update on my LS cams, but I will be doing that because I'm probably not going to do them. So I'll be um, talking a little bit about that later on. V10 diesel <laughs> Tiguan. Yeah, that's that's not low buck. <laughs> An SRT4. Yep. Those are cool. What I would really want to do is go back and do a um, one of the Chrysler Turbo uh, minivans. I remember a guy back in the day did one of those and got to run 10s. That, that would kind of be a fun deal. Um, strip the whole thing out and make it lightweight like they did back in the day when you just, you know, scream the boost up on that on that um, Chrysler Turbo or on a turbo upgrade. Okay, so turbo time. What's a 245 Ford? See, Steve's working on a 2.4 turbo minivan. That'd be good. I wonder about the transmissions. I don't remember what they did back in the day on the transmissions, whether they held up on the minivan stuff. Isuzu Impulse Turbo. I, I remember those from back in the day. All right, guys, we're coming up on an hour. I gotta. <laughs> I have other stuff I've got to do. I've got to start doing the editing on the on the LT1, L99, and LT4 um, head airflow data. I also have to do the. I got to go through it. Like I said, we made a hundred runs on the K24, so I've got to go through all of the data um, on all the different turbos we ran. Basically, I wasn't looking for lots and lots of power because we had enough turbo on any of those things to go way more than we did. I was just kind of looking for a response rate. So I'm going to, I need to get the, the editing done on that. And you know, it's Sunday. You got to spend some time with my family. I just got back from West tech and from skunk racing. So it's kind of cool. I want to thank all you guys for joining me. If again, if you're interested, ugh, big block Chevy, like man size, big block Chevy cam roller cam, but I got the HI6 and anybody that's interested in the LT4 heads, all of that money just goes directly to helping me pay for the 3800 series two. I'm going to, well, I'll probably do a video with Lisa. So everyone will turn in, tune in um, to do like a little fundraiser or whatever for the 3800 series two. So I can go down and get both of those motors at the same time. And we can start working on those right away. I can get one of them to the junkyard, get one of them up on the dyno. I, if I remember right, I think we still have the, bell housing from uh, a, a 3.8 liter Camaro that we used to run the 3800 back when I did the testing back in the day. And we tried to run that with an old tech system, like a tech three system. And it just, we, it didn't work very well. So now we'll, we'll, we will make sure. And if somebody knows, let me know in the comments, I'll take a look at that. Make sure, make a comment after the video is over. If you know what the trigger pattern is, uh, the crank trigger pattern is on the 3800 series two, let me know because we want to make sure that we, we want to run it with a holly. And if the holly will read that crank trigger pattern, that will be gravy. If not, we can put a crank trigger on it. And we um, don't really have to worry about a, a, a cam sensor. We don't really care about that. We'd run it in batch anyways. But we want to be able to control that and run the boost up safely, run an air-to-water intercooler, do all that stuff, run the compound setup, run cams, run ported heads, you know, all the stuff. And then turn it all the way up. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I got to get going. Thanks a lot. Love chat.